Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio in beautiful Uptown Marysville, Ohio. And we're here to do some painting tonight. This is our inspiration painting over my, over my shoulder, this cute little Christmas lamb. This painting's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You can do all kinds of fun things with it, and I'll show you some of that. And we're going to learn about um, how how to work with some paint that may be a little difficult. The paint that I use at the studio when I'm teaching class is Blick Student Acrylic. It's Blick Acrylic. I love this paint because it's really inexpensive. I can buy it by the bucket for not much money at all. The thing I don't like about it is because it's student grade, it's very transparent. So we're gonna have that to work with tonight. You're gonna, you're gonna maybe struggle with the red, struggle with the green a little bit because they're gonna be really, really transparent, really see-through. We'll talk about how to get around that, okay? If, you're, um, if you got supplies from me, this is the paint you're using as well. Um, this is where I like to tell people, if, you're, if you really enjoy painting and you think that you're gonna go get your own supplies and go shopping for paint, I like to tell people, you may see anywhere you go, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Blick, any place you go, you may see a tube of red paint this big for $20. And you may see what appears to be the same thing for $2. And you're like, well, crap, why am I gonna spend 20 bucks? If I could just get it for two, the, that's the difference between professional artist grade paint and student grade paint. Student grade paint, which is what we use here, they thin it way, way, way down. So it goes further. But when they do that, it loses some of the pigment. So you're not going to have those really hard, strong, solid colors. They're gonna be more see-through. If you spend the money and get that $20 tube of red, you're not gonna have to use near as much of it. It's gonna go on like butter and it's gonna cover really well because it has a lot more pigment in it. Anyway, just thought I'd share that. Okay, so before we get started, um, I put our supply list Stop in the name of love. Lynn, you're killing me. So I put our supply list in the chat, but I'm going to go through it real quick. Okay. So for tonight, make sure since you're painting, maybe not necessarily in a studio setting, if you're painting in your house, maybe take a moment, look around, make sure you don't have anything you're super concerned about if you were to get paint on it. The paint that we're using is acrylic paint, water based, water soluble. But we know if you get it on fabric and it dries, it's really hard to get out. So let's take a moment, look around, make sure everything's in, in the clear zone, right? Make sure you're not standing on grandma's antique rug because that would suck if you got paint on that. If you do get paint on fabric though, Murphy's Oil Soap is your friend, okay. Um, with that said, make sure you have an old shirt on. Um, if you're someplace where you have, a, uh, you have a shirt on and you don't have a change, Run to the bathroom real quick, flip your shirt inside out. I would rather, if I have a good shirt, I would rather get paint on the inside and not on the outside. It's gonna be a lot easier to, uh, to take care of later if you get it on the inside of your shirt. Anyway, so I looked around, I have my apron on. Our, here's our inspiration painting for tonight. I'm gonna move this guy out of the way, okay? The, the uh, canvas that I have tonight is a prime stretched, black canvas. Um, you can get these from, I get these from Michaels in Dublin. Um, you can see it's already been primed uh, with black gesso. It's stretched, so it's wrapped around, stapled on the back. Lovely, right? It's fun for something like this, so I don't have to paint that whole canvas black. Um, if you don't have a black canvas, you can just go ahead and play, paint it with black paint. All good, okay? but make sure that you paint your edges. You wanna make sure your paint, your, uh, paint is wrapped all the way around on all four edges, okay? And I'm gonna orient this canvas vertically tonight. 
I think this painting works well vertically. I usually say, you know, let's make a decision. Are you going to do it vertical? Or are you going to do it horizontal? I think this guy works well vertically. Um, but I'm not here to limit you. If you want to landscape a horizontal painting, that's what you do. Okay. But I'm going to try and stay with the original as much as possible. Okay, so I have my apron, I have my canvas. Um, see if you can find a plate. I'm using a paper plate. You could use a dinner plate. We're gonna use this to actually trace, trace our, uh, our lamb belly. You don't have to, right? That's not something you have to do. But I have found that we struggle with getting getting something round. I struggle with getting something round. So if I can use the cheater to help myself, I'm gonna use a cheater, right? And I want something that's big enough that I have about four fingers showing on this side and about like a hand width on that side, a hand width on that side, okay? So if you're using a 16 by 20 canvas, a paper plate works really well. If you're using, I know a lot of you use smaller canvases, find a soup bowl, that might work, or wing it, up to you. Okay, so apron, canvas, plate. Let's talk about what I have over here to the side, brushes. I have three brushes tonight. I have a big brush. This is my um, three quarter inch filbert wash, my oval wash brush, just some kind of a big brush medium brush. And again, mine's filbert. I like a filbert, what can I say? And when I say filbert, it's they're curved this way. They're not flat. You may have a flat or an angular brush. I'm using a filbert that's curved. I just like the way, I like the way they, they feel. I like the way they work, but it's thin this way. It's thin, mine's about hmm, somewhere between a quarter and a half inch wide. It's probably like a quarter inch wide and then some kind of a pointy brush. I don't even know what size this is, but I do know it has a really lovely point. So those are my three brushes. I have um, my water cup here to dip my brushes in. Cool or cold water, never warm or hot, right? Always cool or cold when you're working with acrylic paint like this. I've identified the brushes I'm gonna use. I'm gonna take those brushes, pop them in my water cup, leave them there. I have heard people say that's not good for your brushes to leave them in water like that. You're right, long-term it's not, it's not good for them. But for the couple hours while I'm painting, they'll be okay in there. As long as as soon as I'm done, as soon as I'm done for the evening, I go wash them out really good, warm soapy water at the sink until they run clear and then lay them flat to dry. But while we're painting, I can leave them in there because I would rather leave them in my water cup here and not have them dry out and get crusty. Paper towels to blot your brushes off on. A couple optional things I have down here. I have a toothbrush. If you don't have a toothbrush, no worries. Um, you can skip that step or you can use just a regular brush. I'll show you how to do that though, okay? And then I keep a paint pen. I keep a stack of paint pens actually, because I am really bad at signing my paintings with a brush. I have never been good at it. I have been painting for 38 years and I have never been good at signing with a brush. Paint pens, my friend. And I do believe every artist, when they're done with their work, every artist should sign their painting, okay? So I keep one of these on standby. And then let's talk about our colors for tonight. So our colors for tonight, this is what my palette looks like. It's hard to see there, but I have a lot of white. I'm gonna use a lot of white. You may get um, a bunch of white out now and then get clean white later, but I feel like I might be able to do just about everything with that much white that I have. Moving on around my plate, I have some bright yellow, just a little bit. I have some bright red, because that's for his, uh, his hat, my lamb's hat. I have some phthalo green. Any green is okay, but I'm gonna work my green and yellow together. I'll show you that. I have some brown, non-specific brown, right? 
Um, I think mine is burnt umber. Okay, and then some black. So that's what my plate looks like for tonight. So let me, let me get the inspiration painting out here real quick. And let's talk about how this is gonna work. So here's our inspiration painting. We're gonna start by sketching a circle. That's, you have your plate, right? We're gonna sketch our circle for where our lamb belly is gonna go. We're gonna paint that all white. We'll put his head on there. We'll put his, his ears and his legs and we'll start building on top of that, okay? We have the toothbrush because you can see there's some splatter in the background. And then something that's not on the list, but something that I did. I don't know if you can see it, but he's got some glitter in his hat and some glitter in his berries. I'm not gonna do that tonight. My husband doesn't allow me to carry glitter home. I said that as if he can control me. He can't, but I value my marriage. So I'm, I didn't bring glitter home tonight, but I do love a holiday painting with a little bit of shimmer. Anyway, so that's how this is gonna work. Let's get started, shall we? Let's get that brush to the canvas. Okay. Here we go. So let's start by identifying where we want our lamb body. So again, I have a paper plate and I wanna put it in the middle left to right, but I'm gonna drop it down, I don't know, a good, a good inch or so. How about let's use this as a measurement. The distance that I have on the left and right, I want that same distance at the bottom. Make sense? So if I have a fat hand on the right and a fat hand on the left, I want a fat hand on the bottom. So my plate's gonna be a little lower than half. And then I'm going to take one of my small brushes. Doesn't matter which one, just one of the little ones, dry it off. And I'm gonna take just a little bit of white paint and I'm gonna trace around that. This doesn't have to be neat. It's just to give us an idea of how big that body's gonna be. And I gotta step in front to make sure I get him straight. Sorry. There we go. Kind of tracing around in there. I think I'm getting more paint on my plate than I am on my on my canvas there. And this is going to be kind of messy, but that's okay. It's a circle. And I'm just going to set this plate off to dry. I'll put it back in the stack and use it later. Okay. There's our lamb belly. So now let's go ahead and take our big brush. The biggest brush you have. Dry it out. And I'm going to use white and a little bit of brown. Start with the tiny, tiniest bit of brown. You can add a little more brown. This is the undercoat. So white. And right there in the edge, a little chunk of brown. And I'm going to paint this circle in. And I'm adding that little bit of brown, again, because it's his undercoat. And I know when I put those white, that white fluffy fur on top, that white wool on top, if I see a little bit of brown under, that bright white wool that I put on top here in a little bit is really gonna pop. It's gonna have that contrast, right? a lot of white, little brown, just filling it in. And you're going to find that your paint may be transparent. You may be able to see through it. That's okay. This is just the first coat. There we go. I think I 
might want a little more brown. A little bit. Because I really like the idea of that contrast that will happen later. Okay. I'll give you another minute to get that done. Oh, yay, Emily, I see you made it. Yay. <laughs> it took me, uh, it took me a minute to start recording because I was trying to respond to Emily. She was having a hard time getting on, but I'm glad to see you're here. I'm glad to see you made it. Okay. When you're done, you can either pop that brush in your water cup or hang on to it, up to you because we're gonna use those same colors again here in a minute. For those of you that were on before, um, when I was doing a sound check and you saw what happens behind the scenes, if you know, you know, right? It worked. They are over there happily on the ground. We'll see how long happily, but it worked. May have to get the puppy butter again, we'll see. Okay, so uh, next I wanna go ahead and put my lamb's head on. And I want the top of the head to be, a I want it to be higher than the body. If you're using a 16 by 20 canvas, I'm gonna say about four fingers high. I'm gonna use that big brush again. And I'm gonna use a lot of white this time. Let's start with white. And I apologize again, I have to step in front. Okay, so no higher than four fingers. Okay, and I'm gonna start with the top. So about four fingers up. And I'm gonna do just like a gentle curve. And my goal here is to do a rounded kind of a triangle. And right now I'm just using white. I'm picking up some of the brown that's in the belly, but that, and that's okay. But this for the most part, I'm just picking up white. I need to do long, smooth brush strokes. I want his head to be a little bit longer. A little bit longer. If you feel like your head is blending right in with your body, it's okay. Again, we're not done. This is just, uh, this is just the first stage. Again, because our pain is so transparent, we have to do this in stages. So we'll do a part, let it dry, go back and do it again. It seems redundant, but that's a lot of what, um, what working with acrylic paint is, right? You're building layer on layer. I'm gonna do some long, smooth brush strokes. So you can't see where I pick up my brush and I put it down. And the top of his, the top of his head's a little messy. I'm okay with that because that's where the hat's gonna go. Okay. So I guess if you're looking for measurements, his head is not quite as wide at the widest part, not quite as wide as the body. And the, the nose doesn't, or the chin, I guess, doesn't come quite to the middle of the belly. I think it could and you'd be fine. But that's about where I'm at tonight. Okay. I'm gonna hang on to this brush because I'm gonna go ahead and put legs on now. So I'm gonna set my canvas up here so I can get to the bottom. 
and my legs are going to be at least three fingers apart or three fingers in between. So I'm going to use my big brush with white and I'm going to use it skinny ways, right? Not fat ways. I'm going to turn it and use it skinny to sketch them on there. So I'm going to sketch the inside part of the legs. So I want one there and then about three fingers over. One there. And then I'm going to work on the right leg out from there. I'm going to fatten it up a little bit and give it, give it some shape. Let's be a little thicker at the top. And I'm just using white. I'll put, I'll put color on it here in a second, but I'm gonna do it all with white first. I want that strong base. Okay, feel good about that one. Challenge is gonna be getting them the same, right? <laughs> kind of. He's okay. I need to widen his body out a little there. There we go. Okay. Okay. There comes a point you got to stop touching it because I'm just going to keep making his legs wider and wider and wider. <laughs> And before I know it, he's going to have cankles like me. And we don't want that for poor sheep. No cankles on our sheep. Okay, I'm going to hang on to this big brush because, again, we know how much I love a filbert. I love my big fat filbert. If you want to move to a smaller brush, you can for the ears. Let me show you what I'm going to do, and then you can decide. Starting with white, the ears are going to come right off the corner of our rounded triangle, right off of those, those roundy corners. I'm going to use white. I'm going to load that brush up. And I'm going to start with my brush fat. And then as I pull into the head, I'm going to turn it and make it a little skinnier. And I want my ears to be kind of, kind of swoopy. So I guess if we're looking for measurements, I'm gonna take my ears out about four fingers maybe. If that makes you nervous, start with short ears. You can always gradually make them a little longer, but I'm feeling fearless tonight. So I've got that ear and I'm gonna push and I'm gonna pull in and I'm gonna turn. Zoop. <laughs> That's so silly. I already love Zim. But I love that the ears are a little fatter out here and then they get skinny as they get close to the head. So I'm gonna do the same thing out here on the other side. And again, challenge is getting them in the same. If they're not, that's okay. There we go. Push and pull in. Kinda, something like that. Okay, then I'm gonna toss that big brush in my water cup. I think I'm done with him for now. I love looking over and seeing you guys all working. This makes me happy. I'm so glad we continued this on even after the, after the pandemic, after the C word. Okay. I love to hear that, Dawn. It does, it makes my heart happy. Okay, so I'm gonna give you another minute or so to get to this point. Um, and 
we need to let things dry a little. If they're not completely dry before our next step, that's okay. But I want to let things set just a, just a little bit. So Yahoo number one is um, is getting antsy. So I'm going to go take care of him. I'll be right back. Okay. So while you're all getting getting this part of it, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you another minute or so. Let's see, story time. Okay, so I adore the Union County Humane Society. I've I've said that before, right? Absolutely adore the Union County Humane Society. I will do anything in my power to help them. That's where our sweet honey girl came from. And I just, I love, I love the work they do. So I will do whatever I can to support and help them raise money. Next weekend on Saturday and Sunday, stand by. Sorry about that. Next weekend on Saturday and Sunday is Pet Photos with Santa. You can find it on the Union County Humane Society's uh, Facebook page. And of course I'm going, I have to take my babies to have their picture taken with Santa. But what a lot of people don't know is I'm taking my puppies. I'm also taking Phyllis. Phyllis is my chicken. She's one of my chickens. Phyllis is a very special chicken. Her harness came today. We have to try her harness on her, but she is going to have her picture taken with Santa. I'm guessing I'm gonna be the only one there with a the chicken. So stay tuned. If the pictures turn out, I will have to share them on, on Facebook so you can see Santa's face while he's holding a chicken. Anywho, let's keep moving, shall we? Okay, so our next step, we need to do a little bit of shading because while a white lamb is nice, I wanna add a little bit of shading to it. Now, this is where student grade paint is really going to help us out because the brown that I'm using, I'm using burnt umber. The brown that I'm using is really, really weak. And that's nice for this um, because I don't want my sheep to look like he has, or my lamb, I don't want him to look like he has like a dark brown face and then a white, white on the other side. I want it to be very gradual. Um, I want it to, to blend in. And this paint is really gonna help us with that. So again, it's okay if you're not dry. May actually help you if you're not dry. It'll help with your blending a little bit. So I'm gonna use my uh, medium brush. And again, it's my, my filbert, but just one of your smaller brushes, not a pointy, but one of your smaller flat filbert angled brushes, one of those smaller guys. And let's start with, let's start with the legs. This will be good practice because it's not the focal point of the picture. This is a good way to practice before we move up to the head. So I'm gonna take a little bit of brown paint and I'm actually using my brown that I've been dipping in already that has a little bit of white in the edge of it. Okay. And the right side of both of the sheep's legs are dark. So the right side of both of them. So I'm gonna use that brown. I'm gonna use my brush skinny ways. And I'm gonna start here on the right side of this leg and I'm gonna pull down and then come back up. So he looks like he has a brown stripe on his leg. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. I didn't clean that brush out. I grabbed a little bit of white and now I can blend it with that brown. And as I work my way over, I'm using a little more white and a little more white and a little more white. 
Okay. Let's do the same thing on the other leg. I'll wipe that brush off. Go back to my brown. And it's the right side that's dark. So brown, skinny ways. Up and down there a couple times. And then add a little bit of white. So you're getting a lighter brown, a little more white. I'm working my way left with that. Here we go. Okay. Very subtle, very effective. Now we need to do the same thing on our lamb's head. Darker on the right, lighter on the left. So I'm gonna use that same brush. And for about the top, the top part of the head, about a finger width or so, don't worry about it. The hat's gonna be there, okay? So don't worry at all about that top finger width-ish right there at the top of his head. Okay, so brown. I'm gonna start here at the ear and I'm gonna pull down to the right. And my head is still wet and I think that's gonna help me. So I've got some brown. It's hard to see. Maybe get closer, maybe that'll be easier. So right now he has this stripe, right? brown stripe and you see I'm working from nose or the chin whatever we want to call that and my goal is to get lighter and lighter as I work my way across add a little more brown I want to get a little darker here to the right Oh, and then start to move into some white. A little more white. I want to get it nice and bright white by the time I get to that left edge. If you have too much brown, wipe your brush off or clean it out. Sometimes those darker colors travel where you don't want them to. Now, if you feel that that's not dark enough on that right side, you can add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black, but I can't stress that enough. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black. So I feel like I might want the right side a little bit darker with that brown on my brush, brown, I'm gonna add the teeny, teeny, teeniest bit of black. And I do mean teeny. This is optional, you don't have to do this, but if you want it to get a little bit darker, little bit of black. And I'm doing this while that head is wet, while that paint that I just put on there is still wet. So it blends. I don't want it to lay on top. I want it to blend in. That's the thing we love about acrylic paint, right? It blends, it dries really fast. That's the thing we hate about acrylic paint. It dries really fast. Okay. 
Here we go. There's my sheep. And again, not worried about that top part there because that's where my hat's gonna go. My hat's gonna cover that. Whew, did we all breathe through that? It got a little intense. Blending is, blending can be a struggle sometimes. But this is a great painting to, to practice your blending. And blending, blending different ways and um, with different brushes too. So to illustrate that point, I'm going to switch now to my pointy brush to blend my ears. And I'm going to use a different brush stroke. I'm going to use a lot of little choo, 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 choppy brush strokes. So with my pointy brush, I'm going to take some brown, just brown. And I want the bottom parts of my ears to be dark. So I'm gonna start on this ear over here and I'm gonna pull down and in, down and in. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Little choo, 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 furry brush strokes. So I'm just using brown right now. Then I'm gonna use brown and add a tiny bit of white and do the same thing. Pull down, 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 down. Choppy, 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 choppy. White along the top. Pull down. Okay. I might wipe my brush off and go back. A little more brown along the bottom. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Little pull, pull, pull brush strokes. That's a fun way to blend. Right? That face, we did those long, smooth brush strokes blending all the way across. This way we're doing those little choppy, choppy, choppy brush strokes. Okay, let's go again on the other ear. So now if this ear, I started out at the, out at the tip and pulled in toward the face, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna start out at the tip, pull into the face. So brown, oh, that's hard to do on the other side. A little bit of a challenge there. Okay, brown, some more brown, a little bit of white. Choppy, choppy. And then white across the top. And then I do like where I cleaned my brush off with that first ear and went back with straight brown again, right along the bottom. Darken that brown up a little. Okay. Now, while I have that brown on my brush, I'm gonna come in and I wanna underline that chin a little bit to separate it from the body. So just a little bit of brown. I just wanna come in and do a little, a little underline there. So my chin was kinda, kinda blending right on in there with my body. Okay. Ooh. That's good stuff, friends. All right. Let's give that all a minute to dry, a minute to set. 
a minute for everybody to get to the same spot here. Something that I mention in class a lot, but I don't know that I mention here that often. Remember whenever you're loading your brush, you use around the edge of your puddle of paint. Never in the middle. I, I'm not sure where that comes from, but I see a lot of people load their brush from the middle of their puddle of paint. And if you load it from the middle, you're just messing up the whole puddle. But you can see on mine, I load from the edge. Now, if I, if I needed to, I would just continue using out and around all the way around. Then at some point, if I really needed to, I could scoop some of that clean wipe up out of the middle and move it to a clean spot. I do that with all my colors. That way I can just keep moving on around that puddle of paint and getting clean paint each time. Okay, let's see. Let's let's take a little break from our from our lamb. Leave him set for a second. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put some snowflakes in the background. This is not the splatter snow. I want some bigger, more defined snowflakes. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna clean it out and dry it off. And you may wonder why I'm using my medium brush. It'll make sense here in a minute. For my bigger, more defined snowflakes, I want, I don't know, maybe a dozen of them all around in the black background. All of those snowflakes have that bright dot in the middle and then they have a glow around them like a blur around them. I'm going to use my medium brush to do that because the bristles are spread out. I'm less likely to get a squiggle mark. If I use a pointy brush, I guess this is all about whatever style you're looking for. If I use a pointy brush to do that glow, I'm more likely to see the actual squiggle brush stroke. But if I use my medium brush, I'm more likely to just get like a soft blurry glow. If you want that squiggle, that's all you, right? That's a stylistic decision. But for this painting, I want just that little, that little fuzzy glow in the background where you can't see the brush strokes. So I have my medium brush cleaned out, dried off. I'm going to take a little bit of white paint, the tiniest bit, and I'm going to wipe it off in a clean spot on a clean paper towel. Wipe it off. So now you can see I don't have hardly any paint on there at all. That's probably even a little too much. Wipe it off again. I'm dry brushing, okay? So I don't have hardly anything on there. So I'm gonna pick a spot. I want a glow of a snowflake right here. And maybe one up here. They look really bright on here, but they really are very faded. I can't emphasize enough the tiniest bit of paint and I don't even really have, I'm not gonna reload my brush. I don't have hardly any paint on there at all. Make sure that you're not making a pattern with these. Make sure some are bigger, some are smaller. I'm doing the glow for all of them. Here. And this is nice too, because if this all goes sideways and you're like, ooh, I really don't like what's happening there, a little bit of black over and back in the background, they'll be fine, cover them up.
I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but here with me, I have so little paint on my brush, you can hear it scratching the canvas. Okay, I think. I think I'm good with those glows. And then the coup de gras of the snowflakes, the actual snowflake itself. I'm gonna use the other end of one of my brushes. I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna put a bright little dot right in the middle of each one of those. Snowflakes. I love using the handle of my brush because that gets me a nice little round dot each time. Okay, and then, so I have dots in all of my glow spots. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple, a couple dots on there for snowflakes that don't have glows, right? They may be way off in the distance. I'm trying not to get a pattern. I'm trying to keep them random. That's a challenge, isn't it? Trying to stay uneven. Some of us, our brains just don't work that way. Some of us, our brains want to have everything even and patterned and that's okay. You do you, right? Take a minute every now and then to step back and look. If you got snowflakes every place you want snowflakes, I think I'm gonna stop there. Make sure to wipe your handle off. <laughs> See if you don't dip your hand in it later. Okay. Oh, this is happening, friends. Okay. Let's see, trying to decide what we want to do next. I think, I think I want to go ahead and put the fluff on my, on my lamb. I want to fluff him up. Yeah, I'm going to fluff him up a little bit. So... No, strike that. Yeah, let's fluff him up. It's it's always hard when we're working with red and white, but we want the red to be red. We don't want it to turn pink. Oh, we're gonna put white over top of red and we want that to be white, not pink. So there may come a moment that we're gonna have to go to the blow dryer to make sure that we don't turn our white pink but I think I wanna go ahead and put the fluff on there first. And then we'll do the hat, play in the fluff a little more. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Do you like how I just talked myself through all of that? Let's do this. So I'm gonna use my big brush and there are a couple ways you can do this fluff. I'm gonna clean that big brush out. You can, the original painting, stand by. Come on friends, outside, out you go. Yay who's, what are you gonna do? Okay, so you can, with your big brush, the original painting, 
there's a lot of paint on your brush and they're little sweepy strokes, little swipes, right? All different directions. You can do that. You can do like little letter C's. So they kind of kind of looks curly. Play around and see what you like. I'm gonna play a little bit. I'm gonna start with some white and you're gonna use a lot of paint for this. We wanna see that textured paint. So let's start in here in the middle till we figure out what we're doing. So do we wanna do little sweeps like that? Little sweeps. That looks pretty good. Or do we wanna do little, little C's? So he looks, looks round, like he has a little, little curly. I kind of dig the curl, but that's up to you. That's up to whatever style you want. The one I did originally had the little sweepy brush strokes. But when I was in, I actually taught this one in a class and somebody did those little round curls and I really liked it. I like the way it looks. So your call. But use a lot of paint. And let's cover that whole, that whole original body section. If you mess up and you get on the face a little bit, we can clean that up, that's okay. So I'm just using white right now. I think I might add a little bit of brown. So I have some, a little texture in some of my curls. Yeah, I really like, I really like a little bit of brown in there. I really like those little curls with a little bit of brown. So you can see the two different techniques there. I really like this one. I like those curls. I cannot emphasize enough that you need to use a lot of paint. You wanna be able to see the texture in there. You want to be able to see all the, the, the paint strokes. So mostly white. Every now and then I'm going to grab a little bit of brown. But mostly white. Let's go ahead and paint that whole body in. And I like, you'll see I brought his body out a little bit down here. I like that my sheep is a little, he's not so round anymore. He kind of gets a little chubbier as we get down closer to the legs. So I'm bringing my brush strokes out a little bit down here. I'm turning him into, for lack of a better word, a little more teardrop-ish. Kind of broadening, broadening him out at the bottom. Oh my goodness, I'm throwing paint everywhere. Oh my goodness. The problem though is um, he's, he's um, it's hard to get his shape even now, right? Because I went outside my circle. So I find that every now and then I have to like switch sides and get in front of him and get a different view.
Make sure you come right down on top of those legs. Want to camouflage where the legs came up into the body. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. I'm going to get a little more brown in there in a couple places because I think what I'm going to do, one of the very last things I'm going to do is do clean, white, bright curls in a couple spots on his body. And I'll want that contrast with that brown in there. So I'm not doing a lot of brown, but if I have a little bit of brown in there, it's gonna give me really good contrast when I put a couple finishing white curls right on top. Okay. I'm gonna go back with a little bit of, little bit of brown and clean his face up here because I got a little, I got a little messy. Hey, dog. Bring him right up. Curls got a little crazy. Okay. Ooh, it's looking good, friends. Looking good. So good. I feel he has a, it's a flat spot. It's like a flat tire there. I'm going around that out. What are you doing, Chug? And I just put my brush in my water cup and I'm like, wait a minute. He's got a weirdo flat spot here. Making it worse, can't decide. I know he's not supposed to be perfectly symmetrical, but okay, we're pretty good about that. Okay. So let's take a take a couple minutes. Have everybody get to this spot because our next step is to put his hat on super excited. So when we get ready to put the hat on, we're going to have to have a conversation about that. If you're going to glitter the hat, you can do one coat of red and be done. Glitter it. The glitter will cover up how transparent the paint is. If you're not going to glitter, we're going to have to give that red a base to live on. So I'm probably, I'm going to do white and it seems incredibly counterintuitive, but if I give it white to live on, let that white dry really well, probably go to the blow dryer, come back and put red on top. It's going to be a really brilliant red with that, with that white underneath it. You're gonna to have to make sure that white's dry though. Um, Cause if not, you're gonna have a pink hat. So let's, let's go ahead and put the hat on there in white, take a little break, get to the blow dryer. That'll be your time to get clean water if you need to. Um, and then we'll come back once that's dry and put red on top of it. Okay, so let's do white first. I'm gonna use my medium brush. Now, if you're using glitter for the hat, you just go right in with the red. Because again, the glitter will cover how transparent that red paint is. You don't have to worry about any of this. But if you're not using glitter, stay with me. So medium brush with some white and my hat is gonna start right here where the ear connects to the head. And I wanna make my hat 
Ooh, maybe three fingers high. Maybe. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to swoop up and down to the other ear. Looks like I just gave him um, earphones. This is just in white to give that red a base to live upon. Okay. And I want my, um, the hanging down part of the hat. I'm going to bring it right in front of that ear down there. Okay. About where my this is where my hat's going to end. That's going to be the big the big ball for the hat right there. So hard to see. Sorry. Let me get closer. Okay. And where's my hat going to be? It's going to sit right here on top of his head. Fill that in. Like we just gave him a white do rag. I had a little taller. There we go. I need to stop. Make my hat too big. <laughs> no such thing. It's a big old happy, big old happy Santa hat. Hey. So I have my white, my white on there. Let's let it dry, okay? Let's go to the blow dryer. Let's take, I don't know, a good five minute break. It's 8.08. Take about five minutes, okay? So how about eight, oh, making me do math, 8.13. Is that even close? Yeah, that's five minutes, okay. You know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, eight, 13. We'll come back. So I'm going to go to the blow dryer so my hat doesn't turn pink. Okay. And then we'll come back and we'll, we'll put the red on there and we'll be on to like finishing touches, I think. Okay. Five minutes. And I'm going to mute myself so you don't hear my blow dryer running. I'll be back. Here we go, unmute myself. So about three more minutes, okay? I'm just making sure this white up here is dry so I can put some red over top of it. If it's not completely dry, we know red and white make pink. And pink hat may be your goal. It's not my goal here tonight, okay? So two more minutes and we will move on. Now remember, if you feel you're falling behind or you're struggling or you're getting stressed out, put your stuff down, 
right? Put your brushes down. Come back to the video later. As soon as we're done here tonight, I'll get a link from Zoom for the video and I will go ahead and put the video in the event with the passcode so you can get into it right away. So if you wanna finish painting tonight, you can, okay? But no worries, if you're feeling stressed, take a break. Okay, I just got in the water, in the water. I just got in the refrigerator to get some water um, and remembered how many amazing Thanksgiving leftovers I have that I am so chowing down on as soon as we're done here tonight. Anybody else have a fridge full of Thanksgiving leftovers? I love it, nobody can hear me. Nobody's answering, nobody can hear me because y'all are blow drying your paintings. Oh, too funny. Key lime pie? That sounds amazing. And then, and then there's wine, because, right? Why not? I feel like you've earned it today. You, you feel like you've earned it today, Lynn? Yeah. That's fair. Key lime pie sounds really good. I never think of key lime pie though around Thanksgiving. I always think of key lime pie as like a summer type thing. Oh, Lynn, you've gone sideways. I haven't had enough water today. I have to uh, add my electrolytes in there. You got two bottles from Flying Feather? You got one bottle and your husband got a bottle. I got you. I got you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Nice. Is it good? Yeah, nice. Yeah, we always do the um, we always do the pumpkin dash. Okay, we're gonna move on here in just a second. I see there's still a lot of blow dryers moving. We're gonna get ready and move on here in a minute. We always do the pumpkin dash because it's right in Marysville, right? It's right across from the studio, um, and it's lovely. I get to see everybody that comes to the studio, and I uh, I like to like walk the back of the pack. So my husband and I are always like the last finishers, and I don't even care, right? Because we're out there doing it. We're having fun. I get to talk to everybody. And are you kidding me? The weather this year for the pumpkin dash was gorgeous. Like it doesn't get much better. I've been out doing the pumpkin dash and it's been like freezing mist and the awful. And it was gorgeous this year. So we just took our time. We strolled. We chatted. I got my steps in. All good. Okay. With that said. Let's move along. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint my hat red. And with that white base under there, that's nice and dry, I should get a nice bright red hat. Ooh, excuse me. I'm just gonna go right on over top of that. Ooh, nice. This is where it's always a challenge to try to stay in the lines. Oh, I did it. Got outside the lines. As soon as I said it, I did it. Right. 
So all that, uh, that white I put on there for, for his hat, his white do-rag. He's getting a coat of red paint over it. And that red, because it's so transparent, I'm using long, smooth, sweepy brush strokes. So you're less likely to see every place I put my brush down and pick it back up. Long, smooth brush strokes. Okay. Nice. Okay. Let that dry. Make sure when you're done filling that in with red, make sure you don't have any big red boogers. And by that, I mean, it's gonna be really hard to see, but here I have a roll of paint off the side of my brush. And that is really dangerously close to where I'm gonna put that poof ball on there on his hat. I'm gonna go ahead and smooth that booger out because if I don't, it won't dry. And when I go to put the poof ball on, I'll get into that wet paint. I'll knock the skin off of that booger and I'll get into that wet paint before I know it. I'll have a pink, uh, a pink poof ball. So right around there, right around the poof ball, smooth it out. And right here along the edge of the hat, along the, uh, the brow line, make sure you don't have any boogers there either. Okay. And I'm gonna move away from that hat now, give it plenty of time to dry. Let's go ahead and put some uh, holly leaves on there. Okay. So let's use, I'm gonna use my pointy brush. I'm gonna clean it out and dry it off. And I'm using, my colors are, for my holly leaves, I'm gonna use white, some bright yellow, and phthalo green. And I'm gonna do some mixing to get the color I want for holly leaves. Now, there's, there are other greens you can use. I like phthalo green because I know I can mix it and get like a, a real rich, fun lime color. I can get a pretty true green color too by mixing it. If I don't mix it, it turns kind of minty, almost turquoisey, not quite. There's another green you can use in the, in the palette, um, in the Blick Student Acrylic Palette. It's green oxide. I, it's a real um, like olive earthy green. I am not a fan of green oxide because it's so weak. It is so transparent, just not a fan. I would much rather mix my green, yellow, white and get, um, do you find green oxide, Lynn? Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Um, anyway, I like, I like mixing to get, to get the green I want. So I'm gonna use, a, with my pointy brush, a little bit of green and twice as much yellow and just a little blob of white to start with. We'll mix in here. Ooh, that's good. That might be a little too, a little too bright. Add a little more green, careful with that phthalo green, it's super powerful. Ooh, maybe a little, little more phthalo green. There we go, so green, yellow, white. And I'm mixing a little puddle in there. And if you know me, you don't, I don't normally, you know, I don't normally mix my paint ahead of time. I usually just grab it with my brush and let it happen on the canvas. But for this, I feel like I need to do a little mixing to get the right shade of green. Okay, now the way I'm gonna do these holly leaves, I like that there are three of them and I like that they look like they're coming out of his mouth. So I'm gonna start right here, let me get close. I'm gonna start right, and it's okay if they go off his body too. 
I'm gonna start right here by his mouth and do a line out. And that's where it looks like it's kind of going into his mouth a little bit, hanging on to it. Okay. So now I'm gonna extend that on out to where I want my, my holly leaf to start. I want it to start all the way out here, I think. And because this is the way my brain works, I'm gonna flip it so now it's straight up. Let me show you why. Let me reload my brush. Okay, for my holly leaves, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna point it like an arrow. Arrow, and it's kind of swoopy, right? Those, those point, those uh, lines aren't real straight. They're kind of swoopy. Okay. And then I'm gonna do like an hourglass shape. Hourglass shape. And then I'm gonna flip it and do the same thing on the other end, points. Point, point, and fill it in. Okay. Let me do another one. I want to do one out this way. And what if we start, what if we start here this time? Arrow, arrow, hourglass shape, hourglass shape. And then, again, because that's how my brain works, I had to flip it. And another, another arrow point. Fill it in. One more. I feel like I want three. I feel like I want one right out here. And this one's probably gonna come off his body. I'm okay with that. Okay. So one more time, I'm gonna do an arrow, an hourglass, and an arrow. Fill it in. Yeah. Okay. Now, while those are wet, let me do a little detail. I'm going to take a tiny, tiny bit of black, tiny, 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 and put a line down the middle and give them little, little branch arms. And I'm doing it while those, um, while those leaves are wet. So it kind of blends in a little, so it's not really stark. Branches. Up here. Ooh, those lines got fat. That is okay. And then the last thing I'm going to do to those leaves, a little bit of white. Give them some shushes, some little zhuzhes, a little white. Woo. I'm kind of going around the outside edge with some little white swishes. Just makes them a little, a little less boring, a little less flat. Just 
just going around those edges with that little bit of white. There you go. You can play with the, you can play with those as much as you want. If you have too much white, go back in with a little bit of green. Just play. It really is, if you're working on something like this, up to this point, this painting has been so, so loose. It gets weird if you try to get like really specific and really tight on those leaves. Let those, let those mistletoe leaves be, those hollyberry leaves. Let them be whatever the rest of the painting is, right? The rest of the painting's loose. Let those guys be loose. Don't try to control them too much. Otherwise, they look, they look weird. They look like they don't go with the rest of the painting. Okay. So let's see. Guys, we're getting close here. Let's have a couple more things to do. I'm going to... Go ahead and I'm gonna put my red berries on there. And I feel you might be able to see the stems like through the berries. I might have to give them two coats, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. So I'm gonna put berries right here in this, in this cluster. All right, so I'm gonna do one right here. Yep, you can see the green through because we didn't do white first. But that's okay. I'm just gonna go with it. One there, one there. I have to give them another coat. Add a little bit of white to them to mess them up a little. And that white will camouflage those stems back there. where you can see through too much and they turn terribly pink. A little bit of white is okay. Fun. Okay. You know what, we talked so much about, about messing this up a little. I feel like my, my hat is a little too perfect. I'm gonna take a little bit of a little bit of white and come like across the top of the hat a little bit. It's not on the original, but I feel like it kind of needs that. That hat was looking a little too a little too flat. There you go. Okay. Let's see here. What do I want to do? A little red or a little white highlight on my on my berries. There we go. That's better. Okay, let's see. We need to do a face. We need the poof on the hat and on the ball. And then we need to splatter if we're gonna if we're gonna splatter some snow. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do some, some bright white curls real quick. Because remember, I did some brown in there so I could add some bright white. I'm going to take that big brush and clean it out really well. Okay, And use clean white. And just do a couple a couple white curls in here just to really pop. To give some cool contrast there. Right, not doing them everywhere. But you can see, if I get close, you can see where I'm doing them. You can see the contrast with the brown underneath and the bright white on top. Don't wanna lose all my brown underneath. So don't overdo these. I'm 
Okay. Oops, one right there. All right. Couple clean, clean, bright white curls on there. While I have that white on my brush, I'm going to go ahead and check my hat, make sure my hat is dry. And then if my if the red on my hat is dry, I can go ahead and put my poof ball on there. And I think I'm going to do these little out, out, out brush strokes from a poof ball. Now, if you feel like you can't see your poof ball, if it blends in too much with your, with your sheet, you can take your small brush with a little bit of black. And I do mean little bit, the tiniest bit, like get a little bit of black and wipe your brush off. And you can come in here and accentuate a couple of those, um, a couple of those fluffs down there, too much, along the bottom edge of your poof ball. If you get too much, add a little bit of, little bit of white back in. And most of this I'm doing right there at the, at the bottom edge. It adds that little shadow underneath. And that separates my poof ball a little bit so you can see it. It doesn't blend in so much with the, with the wool, with my lamb, lamb's wool. A little too aggressive. I'm gonna put a little bit of white back over. I just want the littlest bit of gray right there along the bottom. Okay. And now I'm, I'm dry up here. I'm dry up at the top of the hat. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm using that big brush skinny ways and I'm gonna pull up all the way across. I'm pulling up and letting go. So I have that furry, furry edge. Then I'm going to pull down, 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 down. Okay. So fun. And you may decide a couple coats might need a couple coats on there to cover up that where the red meets the meets the the sheep's head but we'll let it dry do it again you can if you want you can go in and tap 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 and get that extra paint and texture right there in the middle to camouflage that line Oh, the hooligans! The hooligans heard me. Uh, heard me tap, tap, tapping on the canvas. The yahoos! They think there's somebody outside now. There we go. All right, come on, yahoos! That's funny. Just one yahoo. The other one's like, no, nah, I'm good. She's just sitting over there. Okay. So by adding, um, I did the little, the little pull up and pull down to get, to get that uh, furry, that hairy um, fuzz. And then in the middle, getting more paint on my brush and tap, 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 and right along that line. Let it dry, go back, hit it again. Okay. 
And then we need eyes and snow splatter and we're done. Okay, so eyes, a lot of people are tempted, I've seen it a lot, People are tempted to use uh, Sharpie. Um, I think Sharpies are too, when you get into fine details like this, my personal opinion, I think Sharpies make it almost too perfect. The line, it doesn't look natural anymore. It doesn't look like part of the painting anymore. So I would encourage you to try to use a brush, but find a really small brush. Okay, so for my eyes, I'm gonna use some black and I'm getting paint just on the very, very end of that brush. And I want, depends on the size of your sheep's head. So this is really hard for me to help you gauge, but I want the top part of the eyes to be close-ish to the, where the bottoms of the ears are. And I'm gonna do about two fingers in between. And again, I apologize, I'm gonna to have to come step in front. So for my eyes, I'm gonna do a little straight down, that wasn't even straight, sorry. A little straight down mark and a straight down mark. Let me get close. <laughs> and try to be try to be straighter than mine. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can line these up a little bit. Straight down. And then I'm going to do a nice curve out. Nice curve out. Nice curve out. And then I'm gonna, with black, I'm gonna fill in just a little bit of this corner. So this, this angle I've created, I'm gonna round that out just a little bit. Okay, those are so uneven. I'm okay with it. It gives him personality, right? Oh, how cute is he? Okay, I'm gonna do just a little bit of a black outline down here because I feel like his chin is still still kind of blending in a little, there we go. And then the last thing to do, well, not the last thing, because the last thing to do is to sign your painting. The second to the last thing to do is snow. So if you have a toothbrush, this is what I do with, um, with all my old toothbrushes. When I change them out in the bathroom, I just wash them and throw them in my, uh, throw them in my paint supplies because I can use them here now, right? So. The paint that we're using is too thick to come off the brush. So if you're new to splattering, let me show you. I'm gonna take this toothbrush, ideally with some clean water, okay? My water's a little dirty, so it's gonna change the color of my snow, but that's okay for these purposes. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna go in the cup, I'm gonna go, Tap, tap, tap. That's it. You want a little bit of water left in the brush. Take a big old chunk of clean white paint. I mean, a big old chunk. Come to a clean spot. I got my plate back from the beginning. Clean spot, scrub, scrub, scrub. So I'm using that little bit of water in the toothbrush to thin that paint down a little bit. Scrub, scrub, scrub like you're scrubbing the floor. If I don't add that little bit of water to it, 
it'll never come off the brush. Okay. Now I'm going to hold it with the bristles up and I'm going to point it right at the painting. I'm going to point it right at the painting and I'm going to pull my finger across the bristles toward me and the paint will fly back that away. How cool is that? And I am going to put snow everywhere. I feel like this is the part where we need to start singing. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Oh, voila, like that. Done. Step back in there in my water cup. <laughs> Clean up my mess. <laughs> if you're, remember, if your paint is not coming off your toothbrush, couple things. You don't have it thin enough. Mine is thin enough that if I hold it up, it'll start, it'll start running like really slow. Um, or if you feel you have the right consistency, but it's still not coming off your brush, you're not all the way out to the end of the bristles, or you're just not aggressive enough, right? You got to get in there get in there and, and really move those bristles. But just like that, my friends, we are done tonight. So don't forget before you finish up, every artist I feel should sign their painting. Your artist signature is entirely up to you. Um, my signature has changed over the years. I've been painting since I was 10 years old. My signature has gone from just my initials to my full name, to Shauna Sue, to the way I sign everything else, S, S, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then I like to put a little year on them. So my signature is S, S, blah, 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 with a little tick and a 22. And we usually sign down in, the, in one of the bottom corners. So with that, I have my silver paint pen, S, S, blah, blah, blah and a little tick, 20, two, done. And I will call that done. So I would love to see your paintings. I would love to see how they turned out. You can uh, pop them up in the Facebook event or private message me. I would love to see them there. You know what, strike that. You may not be able to post in the event. I think I had to turn commenting off because I had um, shenanigans happening there from Pakistan, I think, posting random comments. So I would love to see your paintings. Um, I don't remember if we have one set for December. I don't think so because it falls on Christmas and New Year, like Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, I think. So we are probably off now until January. But if you have something you'd like to paint, send me ideas. I would love to paint them. And I'll see you all real soon. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio, and I hope to see you all real soon. Um, watch Facebook so you can see pictures of Phyllis when she goes to see Santa Claus. It's gonna be a train wreck. It's gonna be bad. But I will see you all soon. Um, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Take care. Thank you.